Friends, I welcome you to my channel. Before listening to this story, I will ask you to like and subscribe. It is not difficult for you, but it is pleasant for me. And we're starting. A grain of sand weighs somewhere in the region of a couple of grams. How many grains of sand do you think it will take to crush a person? I'm a pretty big guy and could probably handle a couple hundred thousand grains of sand at least. Now, for the sake of argument, let's just say that every grain of sand represents a lie told to you by your wife. It changes a lot, doesn't it? The first couple of grains of sand are just an annoyance, something like a little bug flying around your head when you try to swat it. Multiply that number by 10, and you'll start to worry a little. When you increase it to 25, you become uncomfortable and you start to feel a dull pain in your chest. At 50, you feel like you have an elephant sitting on your chest and all the air is being squeezed out of your lungs. Anything over 60 destroys the chest and crushes the heart. Now all you have is a straight line on the monitor and a loud howl that doesn't bring anyone back to life. In my case, the elephant just entered the room. After eight years of marriage to the same woman, you get to know her pretty well. Lisa and I have been together for nine years, and we have been married for a little over eight. We have a daughter, Jackie, who is six years old, and a son, David, who is almost two. I'm not going to bore you with the story of how we met, fell in love, and got married, because it doesn't matter now. My problem is, I'd swear Lisa was cheating on me. No, she doesn't work a lot of overtime with her boss or stay late at hen parties, and our bed life is pretty strong considering how active our home life is. It's just that for a while she just wasn't the same Lisa and behaved differently but I just couldn't figure out why. That is, until recently. I do the usual boring office work from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. five days a week. I work in accounting and am responsible for the payment division of Ajax Sign. I, along with my two clerks, make sure that our company's bills are paid on time. Pretty exciting stuff, isn't it? I've been sitting in front of a damn computer screen all day, comparing purchase orders with vendor accounts. I'm pretty good at what I do and I've caught more than one employee cheating. It's just that sometimes I get so bored that I want to scream. Lisa works for a marketing firm in the city, which does quite a lot of business with our company. We met when her firm opened a new account. I did the paperwork myself, and Lisa was my first contact. I don't think our lives are wild and exciting, but at least I thought our marriage was pretty strong until a couple months ago. Our downward spiral started so slowly that I didn't even notice it coming, even though the clues were right in front of me, and I think I played a small role in changing it, but it was all done out of love. After David's birth and subsequent nightly feedings, Lisa's body clock went haywire. She woke up around 3 o'clock in the morning and couldn't sleep for another couple of hours, no matter how hard she tried. The doctor told her it would pass, but told her to do something when she woke up to make her sleepy or tire herself out. We tried making love for a couple of weeks, but it only made us both tired in the morning, although it always brought a smile to my face. Then she tried to watch TV, but at 3 o'clock there was almost nothing interesting there. Eventually she started surfing the net on the desktop computer in our bedroom. Happy birthday, I said, returning home on Tuesday evening with a brightly packed box. It's not my birthday, Rick. I know, just open it, I said, handing her a small box. Oh my God, Lisa said and her eyes lit up as she opened her gift. So if you get up at night and can't sleep, you'll have something to do that won't bother me either. Lisa ran her fingers over the shiny silver top and ran her finger over the Apple logo. He has all the normal software, CD and DVD player and updated memory, I said with a smile. It's all yours, my love. Lisa hugged and kissed me, saying with an evil smile that I would receive my gift later that night. She launched it, set a password, and connected to the network. She was like a child with a new Game Boy. I got more lovemaking in the next 24 hours than I have in the last three weeks. For the next week, I walked around with a stupid smile on my face. She still woke up at all hours of the night, but at least now she wasn't keeping both of us awake. However, after a couple of months, I noticed that she was staying up at night for longer and longer. More than once I got up to check on her, and found her in the living room or in the kitchen at the computer. Honey, you need to get some sleep, I told her. I thought the doctor said it was only temporary and your body would return to normal. Maybe you should call, make an appointment, and get checked out, I suggested. Don't worry, Rick, everything is getting better, 
It's just that since you gave me a computer, I have a lot of things to do, and I can't do it during the day or after work while I cook dinner and take care of the kids. What are you typing? I asked. It's just an entry in my diary. Can I see it? Read it? I asked. Oh my god, no. Lisa said, closing the cover. It's personal. It's like my personal diary, she told me. I would never ask to see yours. Ask me, because I don't have one. Don't worry, I won't look at your precious computer, I said, trying to smile. Now put it away and go to bed. Otherwise, you won't be worth a damn at work tomorrow. Do you know the story of the Garden of Eden and the Forbidden Fruit? Well, now this computer has become my forbidden fruit. I needed to see what she had been writing there in recent months, but I had no idea how to do it. The first time I tried to do this was when Lisa went shopping with the children. Damn, the password is protected. I saw that her password consisted of nine characters, but that was all. I tried every conceivable combination of birthdays, anniversaries, names, dates, but nothing worked. Then I tried the pet names, phone numbers, and her social security number. Not again. Our regular computer geek always said that he was the best in the area and there was nothing he couldn't do. Let's see how good he is, I thought as I entered his office. What's the matter, Rick? Is the server still too slow in your department? No, Ken, you've solved this problem, now I have a more difficult one for you. I told him when his interest peaked. I bought my wife an Apple computer, and she has all this shit password protected. She has some personal files that I would like to go through, but I can't log in, I told him. So you think your wife is a little cranky? He replied. Not really, but she has a diary I'd like to take a look at. An Apple is a completely different animal. It has its own software and doesn't look like a regular computer, he told me. So you're saying you can't do it? I threw down the gauntlet. I didn't say that. It's just going to take a little longer. It's all. Bring it tomorrow and I'll do it by the end of the day, he said. There's nothing to be done. She keeps the puppy with her all the time, except for shopping or going to the gym. How long is she usually gone? He asked. No more than an hour and a half. Give me the weekend to play. I know a guy who has it, and I'll see if there's a back door or a way to bypass the password, he told me. If you can't do that, just let me know and I'll go to one of the computer stores. That's all I needed to say. There's nothing I can't do. Contact me on Monday, and I will find a solution to your problem. I've been watching Lisa like a hawk all weekend. I started getting out of bed at night and watching her type. For some reason, the way she typed in her diary didn't make sense. I watched her type for a few minutes. She would stop, read what was on the screen, sometimes smile, and then type again. Okay, I'm not the sharpest tool in the barn, but when I got back to bed, it dawned on me. She wasn't typing in a damn magazine. She was having a conversation with someone on the computer, going back and forth. I turned around and walked back down the hall. I watched her in silence for the next 45 minutes while they talked. When she started touching herself, I almost went out and grabbed the computer. She got turned on, and I got hot looking at her. It was only when she suddenly slammed the lid shut that I came out of my stupor. I ran quietly to the bed and jumped under the covers. About a minute later, Lisa slipped into bed with me. I acted as if she had woken me up. What time is it, dear? I asked. Go to bed, it's late, she replied, climbing into bed. I moved over to hug her and noticed that she was hot and a little sticky. I was about to get up and go to the bathroom when she stopped me. I want to smell my scent on your face all night, she said, pressing against my chin. What the hell got into her today? I asked myself when Lisa hugged me and fell asleep in my arms. I didn't know, but I liked it. She woke up, kissed me hard and sniffed me. It's time for someone to wash up, she said with a smile. How about a shower? We took a shower for 25 minutes, playing more than washing. When the water cooled down, we reluctantly got out, and our children were already waiting for us. I think there was no haste this morning. We all had breakfast together on Saturday morning, and I had a complete to-do list for today. I kissed my wife tenderly and said I would see her later, slapping her ass. This continued for the next two weeks. Ken was still trying to find the software back door, and now I was wondering what she was doing every night on the computer. I tried to play on her computer a couple of times but she told me that it was her computer and that I should take mine. When our nighttime fun ended, I didn't like it, and I even sulked, but Lisa changed. 
Now, when she went to bed, it was like move over. I'm not in the mood or I have a big day tomorrow and I need to sleep. Something has happened. On Tuesday, Ken came in with that crappy grin. Tell me, who is this man? He announced, picking up the disc. You're the man, Ken. And what the hell do you have now? I replied. I can't crack the password exactly, but I found a way to log in. And when you install this software, you can see what's going on. It records her keystrokes and what she gets. I've set it up so that you can send information directly to your laptop while it's on and you're online. You're the kin, I said, hi, fiving him. Lisa went to the gym, and as soon as she walked out the door, I took out her laptop, turned it on, inserted the disc, and followed Ken's handwritten instructions. I rebooted it, checked that the software was loaded, and put her computer back where I got it. Before going to bed, I took my laptop, turned it on, and fell asleep. The sleep was not sound, because at 2.45 Lisa got up. She didn't get back to bed until after 4.30. It will be interesting at work tomorrow morning. I got up around 5 a.m., showered and shaved, and headed to my office. I went in first. I made myself a cup of coffee and literally ran to my office. I locked the door, put on the coffee, the computer, took off my jacket and turned on the laptop. My eyes were glued to the screen while I waited for it to load. I followed Ken's detailed instructions and started watching. Did I really want to open Pandora's box? I thought to myself, I was in ignorant bliss right now. What happens if I find out something that ruins my wonderful life? I'm sure Lisa loves me as much as I love her. There's no way she could do anything to change that. At least, that's what I thought. I logged into a special history file, and after a few keystrokes, it was all in front of me. Her password, her handle, and someone named Mark218. It was an adult chat. I leaned back in my chair, sipping my coffee and reading what was printed on the screen in front of me. Lisa must have entered into a conversation that had already begun. Mark218 described in detail how his girlfriend loved to make love. I stop reading and look at my lap. I know how he feels. I laugh to myself. It's over with him. It's over with me. Or rather, I would like to. I read on how people dedicate themselves to Mark's little story. And it ends with Lisa telling everyone that it's hot, but nothing compared to her waxing experience. Damn, it's almost 8 o'clock. I tell myself as I log out, at least for now. I don't want to be caught working with this on screen. I go downstairs grab a fresh cup of coffee, and wander into Ken's office. You're the man, I say, looking into his small office. It worked like a spell. I owe you lunch. I told you. Where there is a will, there is a way. I went back to my office and did what I was paid for the next four hours. I couldn't wait for lunch. Lisa starts by telling everyone how oral I am. Rick makes love with his mouth better than any man on the planet. He can get rid of me in less than 10 minutes with his wonderful lips and tongue. However, he likes my labia, hairless and smooth. That's why once a month I go to the saloon to get my hair done, wax my feet, and now for Carlos, she tells everyone there in cyber country. You see, Carlos owns the salon, but mostly runs it now that he has a full staff. This Saturday, my wax Wendy got sick, and Carlos said he would wax me. I always thought he was gay when he pranced around this place but I guessed it was all a sham. He led me into the back room, and I took off my trousers and sat down in an armchair. I never really thought about my thong until he started taking them off. Come down a little bit, please, he asked when I went down a little lower, while he applied warm wax, rubbed it into a cloth, and then tore off my hair. This area is the only one that hurts when it is waxed. So when I jumped up a couple of times, Carlos asked if I was okay. She's just a little gentle, that's all. I told him when he continued. He was almost done when he asked if I wanted my bikini area waxed. When he always did that, but I wasn't sure about it. Sure, go ahead, but be careful, I told him. The hot wax was great, but it didn't pull the skin tight enough before ripping off the hair. Let me help you pull it tighter, I said, pulling my labia first one way and then the other. After another 10 minutes, he finished and began applying lotion and removing excess wax. The lotion was everywhere, and I mean everywhere. Carlos rubbed my inner thighs and reached out to rub lotion into my outer lips and occasionally slide to my inner ones. I need to make sure I get all the hair, Carlos said, examining my shins first before moving up. He plucked one or two hairs, but overall he did a great job. 
When he got to my bikini, he said there was still a lot of hair left. Lisa, just spread your legs apart so I can get the stragglers. He did both sides again. His face was about three inches from my crotch. I could hear him breathing heavily as he did his last checkup and went back to using the lotion. Maybe, Carlos, we can arrange a payment? I asked. Like I said, I thought he was gay, but how the hell did I know he wasn't? I thought if I gave him a little show, he'd drop a couple bucks. I was surprised as hell when he came over and locked the door. I think we can come to an agreement, he said, taking off his shorts. Now let's see if we can do anything, Carlos said. I'm going to have to reveal a lot more to you if you're going to take my meat, he said, inserting another finger. I thought you were gay, I exclaimed. You and everyone else. Your husband can't be too big, or you haven't made love lately, he said. You're almost ready, he said. Oh my God, I exclaimed, putting my hand over my mouth. Take your time, or you'll tear me in half. The first time is always the most difficult. I held on for dear life as he crashed into me over and over again. Damn, I said, trying to wipe myself off with a napkin. How much did you spill into me? I asked as he continued to ooze. It's been a few weeks now, so it's been accumulated. I'm sorry, he said, pulling on his pants. At the same time next month? What is it? He asked, looking at his diary. Of course, I replied. So I get free waxing and a little bit of what I don't get at home, she said slash typed with haha. I'll tell Wendy that I'm going to take care of you from now on. We both looked at each other and laughed out loud at what Carlos had said. My heart was still beating, but the erection was long gone. This is a joke, right? I said to myself. She's just fantasizing with everyone else, I said, closing the computer. That's exactly how it should be. Lisa would never do anything like that. Hell, in eight years I would have known. Isn't that right? That night I wanted to meet her face to face and tell her everything openly. I walked in and she just hugged me and kissed me hard. I missed you so much today, she said, kissing me. I even cooked your favorite dish for dinner. Maybe later, when the kids go to bed, we'll play a little, she said, licking my lower lips. Now take care of the kids so I can finish dinner. That is, if you want dessert tonight? I was playing with the kids outside until dinner was ready. We all washed up, ate well, and watched movies until bedtime. I helped them take a bath and then helped clean the bathroom after our water fight. Making love, and I mean making love, was as good as ever. We both had enough, falling asleep in each other's arms. However, I reconnected my computer just to see if she was back on the chat line tonight. But after this session, she will probably sleep like a baby all night. I did it anyway. I got up at the usual time, took a shower and even helped the children get ready for school. I kissed my wife goodbye and drove to work, knowing that everything I had seen the day before was bullshit. I was in a great mood all morning. I did a ton of work and almost caught up with the week when it was lunchtime. I usually eat at the table, and today was no exception. Just for fun, I booted up my laptop, logged in, and logged into Lisa's computer. She hadn't signed the contract last night, but she was in business now. There were about four people chatting while I ate my sandwich, drank coffee, and watched everyone chat. CSS22 told everyone about how she cheated on her husband before returning home two nights ago, that her new lover used her in rags and was a little bigger than her husband. Try taking an ice bath, my wife interjected. The more I read, the more doubts I had. It was far beyond the fantasies of a bored married white woman, as she sometimes called herself. I wasn't sure about anything anymore. For the next two weeks, I plugged in my computer every night and got more than one surprise when I looked through what she or her other buddies had written last night. According to what she wrote, she made love to our neighbor Rob, who lives two houses away, when I was out of town for seminars, and once a month with a salesman from her job along with the husband of her friend, who had an open marriage. All in all, in two weeks, she claimed to have slept with at least five guys in the last two months, including Carlos. I started to pull away from her. Damn. I couldn't stand the thought of her touching me anymore. The last straw was Monday morning. I didn't even want to turn on my computer anymore. It was getting worse every day. The Hummer was turned on along with Mark and two others, and I couldn't tell if they were men or women. I was so angry this weekend that I can't even stand myself. My wife Lisa wrote, Last Saturday, 
I went for waxing and eventually got another special offer from Carlos. We filmed this shit afterwards when he asked if I had ever brought my husband a cream pie home. I would never do that to my husband, she told the group. Besides, he'll realize that something has changed, and then what the hell am I going to do? She tried to explain. Not all of them, Carlos replied. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. I tore it all out. Sandwich, coffee and a donut that I ate this morning. You see, when she came home from waxing on Saturday, she had to show me how well they had done. Damn fool. I shouted before I realized where I was. I just ate it twice. Then we made love. I tried to remember if she was more free, but as I said, I just couldn't remember. But that was the last straw. That's enough. I told myself. I know what you're thinking. Did I talk to her? Or even confront her? No. I became stupid and did what many other idiots had done before me. I contacted a lawyer and started filing paperwork. We'll probably sell the house and split the rest in half. I will never get custody of the children. So I decided I would get the best deal I could. I just wanted to get as far away from that stupid Lisa as possible. The only thing I wanted before I left was a little revenge. I wasn't going to hurt her, but I wanted what I'd been denied all these years. On Saturday evening, when the children went to bed, I brought a couple of bottles of my wife's favorite wine. I didn't care if she was sober or drunk. Today her ass would be mine. After she was completely drunk, I told her that I would give her a good back massage with massage oil. She mumbled something indistinctly in response to me while I undressed her and put her on the bed. I should have done this a long time ago. I told myself, giving her everything I had. I was far from rich. Then I started wondering if any of the other guys had her ass. She mentioned that Rob rubbed her and used a finger or two, but never mentioned any real ass game. Lisa was now more than a little vocal when she told me to slow down a bit. Don't worry, I'm almost done, I told her, continuing to use her with a vengeance. I felt my first charge go off like a bullet from a pistol. The next two weren't as intense, but they felt just as great. She was so drunk that she probably doesn't understand what just happened to her, but she'll figure it out in the morning. I smiled to myself as I went to the bathroom. When I returned, Lisa was already asleep and dead to the whole world. I covered her with a blanket and fell asleep without turning on my laptop for the first time in almost three months. I slept like a baby all night. I left before she got out of bed. I was a little ashamed of what I did last night, but these thoughts only lasted a few minutes when I remembered why I did it. Did you get me drunk and use me last night? Lisa shouted at me when I walked in the door after work. Yes, and what? I replied. My ass hurt all day, you bastard. I had to sit on a pillow at the table, she shouted back at me. Don't worry, baby, you'll get used to it. I told her with a smile, taking a beer out of the fridge. Damn it, I will, she spat back. I hope you enjoyed it, because this is the last time you go in there, she said, leaving the room. Do you want to bet? I said to myself softly. Lisa was angry all through dinner, and when we went to bed that night, I tried to get something but she said it would be a cold day in hell before I got anything from her when she turned her back on me in bed. Was I angry? Yes. But I was expecting it the way it happened to us over the last month, but I really wanted to use it again, for old time's sake. I was still planning to play my trump card tomorrow morning. No matter what, I grabbed my laptop and set off the next morning just after 6.30. I got to work, grabbed a cup of coffee and turned on the computer. This was the last time I would have to worry about Lisa texting at night, I told myself. It was the usual shit, as always. Lisa wrote that her husband got her drunk and used her. If he wasn't so small, I would have liked it, she wrote to the whole world. Lisa was on the line when the man handed her an envelope and said that she had been served. She tried to call me at work, but they told her I was taking the day off. I had a dozen messages on my phone, but I turned it off fully knowing that now she would want to talk to me. The little note I attached to the paper spoke for itself. Dear slut, if you were so damn unhappy being married to me, why the hell didn't you just tell me so I could leave? Say hi to Carlos, Mark, Hammer, CSS22, and the rest of the gang. By the time you read this, I'll be explaining to Rob's wife which crooks we both married. I'll pick up the rest of the clothes later this week and tell the kids I'll call them tomorrow. Your little jerk is going to be an ex-husband soon. Damn it. That's all Lisa could say, reading the note and looking through the papers attached to it. At that very moment, 
I was showing Fran Lisa's story about how she and Rob had sneaked up the stairs to the bathroom to make love at the last barbecue. She went into such detail that, despite the fact that it turned my stomach, I still got a little tense. That bastard. I didn't even notice how it happened, Fran shouted. Wait until that bastard gets home tonight. He's already dead. What are you doing with Lisa? Fran asked. She was served this morning, and now I'm going home to pack some things, I replied. I'm sorry I had to tell you, but I thought you'd want to know, I said, hugging her before leaving. I had packed enough clothes for a week and was almost ready to leave the house when Lisa stopped in the driveway. Damn it, I wasn't ready to meet her right now. Well, I think now is the right time, I thought, dropping the bags. Rick, it's not what you think, she shouted, running out the door. Just please tell me that you haven't talked to Fran yet? What is it? She asked, hoping that she would make it in time. I told her 15 minutes ago, I replied. Come with me, Lisa said, running out the door and heading for Rob and Fran's house. Fran will eat her alive, I said to myself, trying to catch up with her. Lisa had already rung the doorbell when I ran up to their house. Fran's first reaction was to take off and slap Lisa in the face. Lisa got up and started telling Fran that she and Rob hadn't done anything. It was all a stupid story that she made up and wrote. Look at my description of Rob, is it correct? What is it? She asked. Fran started reading what Lisa had given her, and a smile appeared on her face. I'd like to, was all she said. Sorry for the slap, do you want ice? No, I just wanted to make sure I got to you before Rob got home. I'm glad you did it. I was going to rip his head off by the neck. But now I can just do something else, she said with a laugh. We'll talk later. Just make sure Rob doesn't see it. Okay. No way, Fran replied. Home. Right now, Lisa said, grabbing my hand. Confused. Yes. Angry. Yes. But I'll let her have her say. How long have you been spying on me? She shouted as we entered the front door. A couple of months. What does this have to do with the case? I asked. Thank you very much. How did you get my password and handle? What is it? She asked. A computer scientist from work helped me. Why do you even care what I think? I asked. I think I deserve that shot, but not everything else. Rick, I'm not using anyone. Do you hear me? Nobody. She shouted at me. I guess I was wrong about Rob, but what about everyone else? Listen to me, Rick. It was just my fantasies. It's all. I'm not cheating on you. You have to believe me she said angrily. It's going to be hard enough for us when you invade my personal life, and you won't think that I'm sleeping with every Tom, Dick and Harry, she said, putting her hands on her hips. Lisa, I don't know what to believe anymore. I thought I knew you, but I don't seem to know you. Even if these were fantasies that I'm not sure I believe in yet, there are many hidden problems in them that interested me. Rick, you don't understand. The way you described that you were stretched out, and all the feelings that you felt at that time. I'm sorry, but I just don't buy it. So, Lisa, do I believe you? Not quite. What do I need to believe you? I have no idea. But right now, I just want to get away from you to think about what to do next. With that, I left. I stayed at the Holiday Inn near where I worked and had a quiet dinner in my room. I was going to get drunk, but I thought, what the hell is that going to do for me? I was angry, confused, and most of all I wanted answers. She didn't cry, she didn't apologize, and she didn't even ask me not to leave, I said to myself, recalling our brief meeting this morning. She was most worried about me invading her privacy. Like I said, I didn't know her as well as I thought I did. Thank God, there was a lot of work on Thursday. It was the end of the month, and everything had to be updated by the end of the day. I had just finished my last stack of bills when Lisa sent me an email. Well. Stop sulking like a little boy and will you come home today? Sulking. A little boy. Lisa really had a funny way of apologizing, I thought. Continuing to read. If not, please let me know so that I can send your clothes to where you are. She's really a heartless fool, isn't she? I thought, not believing what she had written. I'll pick up the rest of my shit on Saturday. I hope it won't bother you until then, I replied and pressed in her. Two seconds later. I got the answer. Don't worry, they won't interfere. I can always put his clothes in my closet. Anyway, when we're together, we hardly wear anything. Lisa either tried to trap me, 
make me hurry home, or make me jealous one of three things, but nothing came of it. I just got even angrier and dug in my heels. So Friday morning and afternoon passed. You really should call my kids, they miss you. Oh, did I say my children? I'd say your children, but I'm not sure if you're their biological father. I think that's another thing we should check, right? Damn it. Lisa was undoubtedly digging herself a deep hole. God, I'm glad I applied, I thought, looking at my monitor. I never expected Lisa's father to show up at my office on a Friday afternoon, but damn it, I never expected to be in this situation two months ago. Rick, why did you leave Lisa and the kids? Are you crazy, son? Dan, I think you should talk to Lisa, not me. She brought this on herself, I told him. Look, I don't care who started this. You two belong together, that's all that matters. You guys need to sit down, talk and figure it out. Think about your children. Dan, she's already moved in with her lover, and now she's telling me that the kids might not be mine. And you want me to sit next to her? Our divorce will take about three months before it becomes final. Maybe we'll get together in that time, but I doubt it very much. I hate to interrupt this conversation, but I'm going to have a lot of work to do by the end of the day, and now I really need this job. He left reluctantly, and although I understood what he said, I couldn't stay with Lisa just for the sake of the children. This is not going to happen in my life. I'm taking the kids to the park on Saturday. I don't want them to see their father leave them again, Lisa wrote in her last email. You definitely have a way with words, you golden, tongued slut. It's a pity that I didn't see much when we were married. Do what you want with your children, as you eloquently put it in your last letter. It took me less than an hour to pack. I didn't need much right now except an iPod. Our bed was unmade, and I even checked for a new wet spot. I left a letter on my pillow for each of my children, telling them how sorry I was and how much I loved them. My last act was to take off the ring and put it on Lisa's pillow along with the note. Sell it, throw it away, I don't care anymore. I hope you found what you were looking for. The corporate rate for my motel was $50 per night. I figured that a furnished apartment would probably cost me about $850 to $1,000 per month, including all utilities, so on Sunday I went looking for it. There was a lot of shit in there. If it was a good place in a good neighborhood, then it was out of my price range. The only thing I could afford was a one-bedroom apartment in a good neighborhood, and only if I signed a one-year lease. So I haven't taken anything off yet. I called my children every other day and saw them at their parents every weekend. My lawyer warned me that Lisa would probably get the house until the children turned 18, and then it would be put up for sale. I asked if Lisa's lawyer had contacted him, and he said no. What the hell is she waiting for? I asked myself, have you already signed the papers, or have you given them to your lawyer? I sent her an email the next day. No, she replied. Why the hell not? I'm not in a hurry. And you? She replied. She was still playing these games. After about a week and a half, I was sitting in my room watching TV, I was wondering if she was still visiting the chats, so I turned on my laptop and pressed the button. Lisa was telling everyone about her latest adventure. She talked and talked about how her friend from another city had arrived the day before. I told him I didn't want to go to dinner. I just wanted him to use me all night, she wrote to everyone. That's exactly what he did. We made love from Wednesday evening until Thursday morning. I gave him all three of my holes, as no one had used them for quite some time. She probably shot at me, thinking I was still watching. Lisa went on to describe in detail how he took her for the first time. I was angry, but there was nothing I could do. I signed up with the nickname Golden Tongue. Everyone greeted me, including Lisa, who was a cheater. I informed everyone that I had just returned from a date and described in great detail the hot 30-year-old secretary for my job. It is not often possible to meet a woman of this caliber in the market. I told them about our dinner, not forgetting to mention my future ex Lisa and our favorite restaurant, how we went dancing after dinner, and how she liked it when we started climbing to the next level right on the dance floor. Hey dude, what was her name? Hammer asked. Let's just call her Candy, because her tongue was melting in my mouth now. This caused a lot of comments from everyone except Lisa. For the next 20 minutes, I described how we made love on the dance floor. Finally, how I took her to my motel and made love to her all night. Did you notice that I said we were making love? I only did it for Lisa, because now she knew who was telling the story. 
I used every sensually descriptive word I could think of to describe what we were doing. I should have won the Pulitzer Prize for my story. I plan to see her a lot more often in the future after my divorce becomes final, I told the group. Your wife must have been a real loser, one of the band members wrote. No, not a loser, just someone who found it easier to lock their ass away from me, I told them. Well, if you guys don't mind, I have this warm body next to me that's begging for attention, maybe I'll text again tomorrow, I said, signing it. For the next two weeks, we went back and forth, exchanging insults through our stories. Lisa was telling everyone about her goofy little husband who could never really satisfy her, while I kept talking about Candy and Sue who would share my life after my dead-beat-up cheater signed the divorce papers. So our life went on. When Lisa received court documents to do a DNA test on her two children, she went berserk. What the hell? She was yelling at me on the phone. Just a simple DNA test to determine if I'm actually their father, that's all, I told her. You're their father, asshole, and I'm not going to obey. No problem. I will ask the representative of the court to make sure that the children are taken to the clinic for examination. So the results can go straight to the judge to compare with my DNA sample. Are you crazy? Stop it, she screamed. Didn't you say that the children probably aren't mine? I'm just following what you told me, I said in a calm voice. I lied. Okay, I lied to hurt you the only way. I know you're lying, and you're very good at it. That's why I don't believe a word you say anymore. So if we're done, I'll have to take a break. I have a date that I'm already late for. It was nice talking to you, Lisa, I said, hanging up. I didn't have a date with anything but six cans of Corona, but I started making up my story for tomorrow night, and it ended with a real nap. The next thing I did was my face. Well, I didn't exactly do it myself. It was more like something that was done for me. After work, I stopped at one of the local bars for a few drinks before heading back to the motel. Carlos was sitting in the bar, in all his glory. Now I'm going to explain something to you, and I want you to listen and remember it for the rest of your life. The rush of adrenaline will not give you superhuman strength. You're going to be the same dumb shit you were before and after. Let me explain. After meeting Carlos, I must have gone a little crazy. There was an asshole who used my wife every month and I wanted to get my pound of flesh. I was pumped up. I was hot and maybe even a little drunk, who knows. I just walked up to him, introduced myself, threw beer in his face and took my best shot. Damn, if this is my best chance, I was in deep shit as I found out. Carlos beat the shit out of me. In short, he washed the floor with my pathetic ass. Two black eyes a broken nose and a face that his mother could no longer love, as well as several broken ribs. The last thing I remember before I lost consciousness was Carlos lifting my bloody head by my sweaty hair and whispering in my ear, I'm gay, you stupid shit. And anyway, what the hell do I need your skinny wife for? He said, letting my head touch the floor one last time. They took me out of the club, put me in a taxi, and spent the next eight hours in the waiting room of Mercy Hospital. Thank God for good health. I was x-rayed, washed and bandaged before catching another taxi to return to the bar and pick up my car. I went back to my motel and fell asleep, or at least tried to. That same evening, I published my next story, and everyone went crazy. Hey man, is she in bed with you right now? Hammer asked. She's pretty damn sure, I typed. Something as sweet as this is hard to let go of, if you know what I mean. Right now she's trying to make me tense up so we can do it again tonight, but I don't think that's going to happen unless she does that special thing that always works, I typed. More than one person has asked what this special thing is. Let's just say she's doing something with the tip of her tongue in a secluded place, I typed. That's rude, man. One guy typed. No girl would ever do something like that, said another. Then the cheater wrote that I was lying like hell, and she knew it for sure. Well. Unless you're sitting between my legs right now, you don't know what it is. That's probably all your stuff. And I know it for sure. I wrote in bold letters. Everyone was outraged, telling her that she didn't know shit and that she was probably making up all this shit she was writing. And these were only the most innocent statements. My lawyer received the results of the DNA analysis and confirmed that I am the father of my children. It looks like she was telling the truth, he told me. I told him I'd be back with him in a couple of days and went back to bed. When I woke up, I looked in the mirror. I looked terrible. 
I was eating my breakfast carefully when I had an epiphany. I really was a dumb shit. Let's see. Lisa didn't make love to Rob or Carlos. The children were mine, and it was I who angered Lisa by invading her privacy. It was a fantasy, damn it, and I overreacted. Lisa tried to tell me that, but I didn't believe her, and only then did everything get out of control. I was really dumb. I knew what I had to do if I wanted my old life back, or if it's even possible. Lisa said some nasty things to me, and I reacted accordingly, but it was time to do something, and I hoped it wasn't too late. I'm sorry I didn't believe you. That's all I wrote and pressed enter. It's a little late for that, isn't it? Lisa replied. It's never too late if two people take care of each other. What about Sue and Candy? How can you want to give up that special thing she does with her tongue? Was her sarcastic reply. Just like you can give up your monthly specials, I told her. Lisa didn't respond until Wednesday morning. You hurt me. Really hurt me, Lisa wrote. After all these years together, you'd think you didn't know me. I'm sorry for all the nasty things I sent you. It never occurred to me that you were serious until I was handed the documents. Then I got angry and dug in my heels. I was ready to come to your job a couple of times, but I decided that eventually you would come to your senses, and if not, well, it's your loss. Carlos said that he had spoiled you badly and asked me to excuse him. His partner and friends were standing next to him, and he didn't want to seem soft, even though he said you were a wimp. Come back home. I need you to be in my arms again. Don't pack your things. Just go home. Climb into our bed and make love to me. As always, your loving wife. It took me only 20 minutes to get home. There was a light on in the hall, and the door was open. The children were asleep, but Lisa was not. She gasped when she saw my face, but I told her it was a small price to pay to get her back. I tried to make crazy passionate love to her, but the best I could do was make love a little gently because of my injuries. However, we fell asleep in each other's arms. I'm not sure if Lisa woke up that night. All I know is that she was in my arms when I woke up. It was good to be home. I took Thursday and Friday off, and by Monday I didn't feel so bad anymore. Everyone at work laughed and got a lot of pleasure from the fact that I was in a bar fight and lost. But by Wednesday, I was already old news. Lisa and I were together again, and I dodged a bullet. On Thursday, I told my boss that I needed a couple of hours off so I could invite my wife to lunch. I owe her a lot, I said. I bought a dozen roses, took a bottle of our favorite wine in the freezer in the car, and ordered a picnic basket at the deli next to my work. Holding everything in my hands, I drove to her office building. There was a park two blocks away, and we'd have plenty of time, I thought, looking at my watch. Imagine my surprise when I pulled up and saw Lisa coming out of the front door with a tall blonde guy. I knew I should have called her, I told myself as I watched her walk to the rental car. It must be some merchant taking her to lunch, I said to myself. When he opened her door and slapped her ass, I not only noticed it, but also put her in gear. When they drove off, I was on their tail just two cars behind. When they pulled up to the Hyatt, I wanted to ram their car, but decided that I didn't need an accident and insurance problems. When they both came out an hour later, they were in for a shock. There was a blanket on the hood of their car, and a full picnic lunch was prepared. The wine was in an ice bucket, and flowers were scattered among the food. I really wanted to wait, but just recently I got my ass kicked. My ribs hadn't healed yet, and I wasn't able to go another 10 rounds with a guy who I knew could kick my ass. I went to Lisa's place of work and found out the name of the person she was having lunch with. With the help of a computer, you can find anything. Names, addresses, surnames, whatever. I called him at home and, being a good guy, told his wife that her husband wanted to send her a postcard just because he loves her. The postcard came back. I told her. Just let me check your email address and I'll send it again, I said. A trusting wife gave me their email address. I sent her a photo from my phone of her husband and Lisa walking hand in hand into room 214, with the caption, Guess what they have for lunch? I pressed enter and went back to work. I called Lisa on her cell phone and wasn't surprised that it went to voicemail. Don't bother to call me back, ever. I guess I really didn't know you. Tell Mark that his wife is not too happy with him right now, and I would give anything to hear the lies he tries to tell her. I'd love to chat, but I have a lot to do today, I said. Oh, by the way, just sign the damn papers this time, I said before hanging up. She didn't call me back, 
and two days later she signed them. I was stuck with alimony, and she wanted alimony for herself. I told her that if she insisted on it, I would send the photo to her boss and fire them both. She withdrew her request. I think sometimes fantasies are fantasies, but sometimes fantasies are reality. Who knows?